All right, people, welcome back to my channel. This is going to be a podcast kind of style. This is just going to be a cozy podcast video where you're just going to listen to my voice. I am obviously going to put pictures on so that you guys also have an idea of what it is that I'm talking about. This is going to be part one. I don't know how many parts this is going to be because we are going to talk about a lot. You guys are going to learn the deep secrets about manifestation, about the law of attraction, about the history of it, because it is all connected and it is something that's really going to make you understand. But I will say that if you haven't already, please make sure to check out the video I recorded yesterday about manifestation because it is going to shine a light over what it is that we are going to talk about today as well. So it's like a little pre you know, preparation video, I guess you can say. So first of all, I do want to talk about the story that I talked about yesterday in the manifestation video. And that is about your higher self, the way that you see your higher self and the way that you see your ego self. Because you have to understand that your higher self is your passion, it's your goal, it's your life purpose. It's helping and guiding you towards your goals, towards your heart's desire towards what it is that you actually want. And you have to see your higher self on a mountaintop and your ego self is down in the valley. So obviously your ego self needs to get to the mountaintop where your higher self is. And your ego self is going to look around and be very stressed about all the things that you see, all the things that you see as the blocks, all the things that you see as walls. And your ego self is going to be like, well, I can't get up there. And your higher self is going to look down at you and be like, hey, I'm up here. You know, like, get up here. Your desire and your dream and desires is up here with me. And the ego self is going to look around and see the river. And it's going to be like, well, I can't because there's a river. Like, how can I cross the river? And there's trees, there's stones, there is, you know, it's a long way. The mountain is tall and scary and it might be dark and you don't have a flashlight. So your ego self is going to build up all these like excuses. It's going to build up all this like I can't. It's going to complain a lot and the higher self is going to be like, well, why don't you take the bridge that I created for you so that you can cross the, the river? And the ego self is going to look at the bridge very surprised and say, well, it wasn't there when I looked at it. And obviously the bridge is not there because that you only saw the river. You only saw the blocks. You didn't let your higher self help you. And that is the magical thing about manifestation, that your higher self is always going to, to guide you. But you do need to be aware of it. You do need to see the path. So your higher self is going to help you and guide you all the way to the mountaintop. It's going to create the pathway for you. It's going to make you aware. That is the magical thing about your higher self. You do need to find ways how you can push down your ego self. So let me start out saying this. Let me from the first second of this video twist your brain. Because if you only knew how many miracles you have already performed, nothing would ever overwhelm or frighten you. That's pretty exciting, right? First of all, I want you to take a look around where you are. This can be a room, a house. This can be something that you have in your life. This can be one of your abilities. There's something around you or near you that you created. Again, this can be a car, this can be a camera, this can be your laptop, this can be a book, this can be shoes, clothes, this can be your child, this can be your mother and father, whatever. It can be something about yourself, your courage, some kind of ability. You already manifested that. Some people really find it quite hard when it comes to switching up the logic about manifestation and the logic about the law of attraction. This reality that you live within at this moment. And let me be very clear when I say this. At this moment. Because we manifest all day. Every day. All the time. No matter if we are aware of it or if we are not aware of it. So whatever you have experienced or whatever you have around you. 
is a manifestation of your own doing. And learning how to un-f yourself and manifest what you want is much easier than you think. Everywhere you look, some strange coincidence or synchronicity is telling you to take the right path, the new path. The universe is always guiding you. Your spirit guide is always guiding you. Again, your higher self. And it's all about recognizing the signs. You might see a billboard showcasing the law of attraction. Your best friend's three-year-old asking you if you are happy. So it's for you to realize, are you happy? Whatever it is that you are doing right now, whoever you are together with, does this person make you happy? Are you happy with the job that you're doing? You might even hear a commercial on TV or radio with, did you go after your dreams? It is time. Maybe even your cousin was talking about learning how to manifest reality at last week's family dinner. We see this everywhere now. We are being guided. But are we listening? Are we seeing the signs? That is one of the things that I've been talking about a lot, that some of us we have the tendency to walk while in the forest, stressing about daily things, stressing about ourselves, stressing about things that haven't even manifested. And in our chaos, in our running wild in the forest, we oversee steps, we oversee signs, we oversee the person waving you down a pathway and you are just running past him because you're like, whatever, I have to take care of my own stuff. It is time for you to listen. It's time for you to look out for signs. And yes, manifestation can be an intimidating concept, especially in this time where it seems as if everyone is practicing it and everyone knows how to do it. Everyone tells you how easy it is. Everyone tells you just watch the secrets, then everything is going to be all right. You're going to understand it. But a lot of people put it out in different ways. And yes, it can be quite confusing, right? A lot of the information you find is either black or white, but they don't really explain the gray part, which is the important part of receiving and staying in this energy. Manifestation is not a vacation trip to Rome. It's a lifestyle. So I hope that I can give you a different perspective on this, a different view, hopefully. At least I will get you to think about yourself and your life the next half hour or hour. We will see. So how does manifestation work? There's some important gray zones you need to understand before. One being that everything is vibration. Like Abraham Hicks said, what you think about activates a vibration within you. For some people, this is the hardest to swallow. Like, what do you mean? Vibration. What kind of hippy-dippy, airy-fairy, witchy thing is that even? Are you trying to brainwash me? No, I'm not. I'm actually trying to open your third eye for the things that you might have overlooked. Because a lot of people only see the physical things around them. They see the physical world around them. And they say, this is reality. That is real for a lot of people. And to those people, I will with a smile say yes and no. If you put a hand on something that's close to you right now, a chair, a table, a phone, your laptop, it feels solid. Still, it also has a very different feeling to it, depending on what it is. Your couch is soft, it might be soft. Your phone is more solid. The only reason it feels solid is because your hand is vibrating at a different speed than whatever it is that you just touched. If you and that table, that laptop or that chair were vibrating at the same speed, you would be able to put your hand right through it. So some of you might be like, well, yeah, where's the proof? that everything is vibration. You can actually find proof all the way from the Bible to Nikola Tesla. So we are told in school that in the beginning there was a word and the word was God. We are told that that is how the world began and how creation took shape. So in the beginning there was the word and the word is a sound. 
in the beginning there was a sound. The sound is a vibration, a frequency. The words you speak out loud in your mouth is vibrations. We also know that sound creates shapes. And we know that because that the German physicist Ernst Kladny did research on vibration and what's known as Kladny figures due to the patterns that sound can make. It's called cymatics and it's from the ancient Greek and it can be translated to the word wave. It's the process by which you can change the shape of things with sound. I am going to see if I can find some clips so that you guys can see what I mean because it's actually pretty fascinating. And believe me when I say that sound is way more important than you think. Sound is a factor which holds it all together. Sound is the basis of form and shape, like Nikola Tesla said. If you want to find the secret of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency or vibration. The very foundation of our universe of matter and thought appears to lie in sound and vibration. There is an ocean of pure vibrant consciousness inside of each one of us. And it's right at the source of base of mind. It is right at the source of thought. And it's also the source of all matter, all physical matter. Everything we have around us is actually the result of frequency. And what this means is that if you amplify the frequency, the structure of the matter will change. If you try to look at the different sounds for the chakras, the base chakra, the sacred chakra, the solar plexus, the heart chakra, the throat chakra, the third eye and the crown chakra, you will realize how important this is. It's like the effect that you see with a wine glass. If you play sound, it will cause it to move, change its structure, and eventually it's even going to break. Sound is behind the manifestation of form and matter. Even the ancients knew much more than given credit for. Regarding life, the universe, astronomy, advanced mathematics, magic, magnetism, healing, unseen forces, and so on. If you look into the more modern terms of expression, you will find more like into the great voids of space came a sound and matter took shape. And if you look at yoga, it's a discipline involving controlling breathing. There's a profound connection between speed, the expression of your thoughts and prana, the life energy carried on the breath. When we speak, we and naming our reality while using the power of the breath in order to form and express our words. Speech is prana in action. Prana naturally creates sound. And I'm sure that a lot of you guys are already aware of the term prana because I did actually speak about that in my video I did about developing your spiritual gifts. I will link it up here so that you guys can see it if you haven't seen it. So if you look at Hindu scripture, it tells us that the sound om is the beginning and end of everything and the key to the manifestation of this universe. Om creates. Um contains within it every sound needed to create every shape, animal, doing and being that occurs in this dimension. Chant um and you will attain your goal. If nothing else works, just chant um. Um is the most elemental of vibrations. It is the sound of the void. It is the prime mantra of the higher self. And it is something that helps me if I really try to connect with my higher self, if I try to do my channeling, if I do my channeling videos, I use 10 minutes where I chant the um. So I'm just going to sit quietly and I'm going to um. And in the beginning you do feel silly. <laughs> I do this, um, you know, <laughs> publicly <laughs> speaking. So, you know, it, it might feel a little bit more silly for me because again, I normally just do it when I'm by myself. So you do need to practice the power of this word or sound. So it's all the way from ancient verdict Hindu literature to the Bible and the modern term of Nikola Tesla. 
So just like the solid objects you touch happens to, you know, be vibrating at a different speed than you. So just like the table you touch, it feels solid because of the dancing electrons. All the objects around you are also just vibrating at a different speed than you, which is why you can see it. That's why you can put your hand through it. And it's the same when we hear something. We are sensing the vibrations in the air. And these vibrations enter the outer ear and cause the eardrum to vibrate too. And it's the same, we can't really hear the vibrations that we make when we are waving our hands in the air because that they are too slow. The slowest vibration our human ears can hear is 20 times a second. That would be a very low sound. The fastest vibration that we can hear is 20,000 times per second, which would be a very high sound. It's all about vibration and sound. Animals can hear different frequencies from humans. Cats can actually hear even higher frequencies than dogs up to 150,000 times per second. And I think we all have heard that our animals are actually way better sensing things that we can see, like spirits. So think about that. So everything around you is vibration, including you. And a lot of us don't take into account how that energy is affecting us, especially the energy given off by other people. Have you ever had this gut instinct about another person? A feeling, a feeling of dislike, a feeling of like that you just can't explain? That was their vibrational energy that you were sensing. And believe me when I say you can feel that energy or get that instinct even if you just see a picture online or if you see a video of someone. If other people's situations or places cause a reaction inside of you, you have to know that our own energetic vibrations also causes reactions in other people. Similar energies attract one another. Positive people hang out together. And the complainers, the drama queens, the haters attract people with the same energy patterns. It's important here to look around yourself and be like, oh yeah, I actually tend to attract moody people lately. Is it because that I felt that way lately? And yes, it is. See, you get it now. If you feel like you attract happy people, miracles, surprises, it's because that you vibrated that outward. It's that easy. So what have you attracted today? Become fascinated with the cause and effect of energy and the attraction of similar energies. Try to play around with matching your vibrational energy with things, people, situations that you want to bring into your life. So how does manifestation work? Manifestation is the ability to attract that which you are already feeling. And before getting further into this, we live in a world where society and news rule the world. People think that they need to be something else so that they can manifest. And that is simply not true. You do not need to be what other people are or what you see society is. That is not how you manifest. If the universe really wanted us to be like that, don't you think that we all would have been looking the same way? Well, we don't. Just like we don't really vibrate the same way. Just like we all don't really want to manifest the exact same thing. Like your friend might want to manifest living in a big city, going out every night, being closed in by the material world. And you, you might want to live where there is nature, where you can hear the birds, the water stream, see the stars at night, walking around the forest close by, finding your one true love. But you might look at your city friend and be like, well, that is what society wants me to live like, right? No, the universe wants you to find yourself. You might be lost, yes, 
but if you feel the vibrations of the two different lifestyles, you know what you want. What does your instinct tell you? One lifestyle is going to make you unsure and one is going to want you to visualize it. You really need to become what you want. And a little trick here is that if you run after the fake image, the universe will give you that. The universe will give you fake. The universe will give you unfaithful relationships. Debt, chaos, tragedy, loneliness. You need to break that illusion. You don't need it. You need to break the illusion that you don't need. You simply are. That is the lesson. And the beautiful thing here is that the universe is going to catch you if you take the wrong turn. It is going to be like, yes, you did take a detour, but you also learned something. So what do you want to do now? And another thing that some people sometimes look away from is that if I would tell someone who got robbed that they in some way attracted that robbery, I would probably get in trouble for saying that because it seems like I'm saying that they were asking for it. And what I'm saying to you is that vibrationally they did. So let me give you another example. When you are afraid, the things that you are afraid of happens. Not from one second to another. It's not like you think about the elephant and poof, two seconds after there is a huge elephant next to you. It's you thinking this over and over. It's you thinking this consciously or not consciously. And some people might say, well, yeah, I said that people get robbed in New York and I was right. So there is a lot of ego that plays into all of this. When it comes to manifestation, the first concept that you have to understand, and you have to understand it fully, before that you can move towards doing anything creative with your ability and really create the things you desire. The first thing you really have to understand is every little thing that is happening to you, regardless of what it is, regardless of how good, bad, disgusting, awful, is only happening because you have a belief. And this is usually a deep-seated belief. It's deep-seated paradigm. We sometimes tend to think the way our parents think. Money don't grow on trees. So you grow up with the mindset that it's hard to make money. You might grow up with fighting parents. You might be a child of divorce. So for you, it's a part of being you carry their vibrations. It's the feeling of that thing that is happening is what should be happening, is what you are worthy of, is what you deserve. Or in some people's cases, it is the reality of the situation. And before you get like, no, not me, think back on some things and analyze your belief and what happened. And believe me, people get too caught up in this, especially of the idea of reality. I have had a lot of people in the past being like, oh silly, you can't make money with photography, or you can't make money with YouTube, or what a silly thing to believe in. Well, yeah, that is your reality. But in my world, in my reality, I can. And guess what? I do. So let me give you another example. This is going to show you the example of vibration, frequency and manifestation. Because I was driving with a friend and while we were driving 15 minutes before that we even got to our destination, my friend was like, we are never going to get a parking spot. I already now know that there is a lot of people, it's Saturday, and I was like, relax, I am sure that we will find something. Because that is my reality, that is my belief. My friend had a negative attitude and was in her reality of not receiving. So we came to our destination, and yes, there was a lot of cars, no parking place, and she was like, look, just what I said, no parking spot. 
And yeah, of course, that was what she believed in. That was what she manifested. And I was still calm. I was just like, well, just drive a bit further down and I'm sure that, you know, we are going to find a parking spot. Then right in front of us, someone, you know, drove out of <laughs> the parking spot. So ta-da, a free parking spot for us. So it's to show you guys that both of us manifested. But my friend was still complaining after and I was like, well, you manifest what you believe and you are negative about it before that we even was there. And her response was a typical response. I'm not being negative, I'm just being realistic. And that's the thing. If you try to talk with people about this, when you say, well, you attract this thing to you because you were afraid of this thing, they are all going to say, no, I wasn't afraid of this thing. And that's why it manifested. I was just being realistic. I knew that was going to happen because that's the realistic thing to happen. And that's why it happened. So what they are basically saying is, this thing that is happening, this world, these people, all these situations are happening to them. They have no active part in creating these situations. They are simply a reactor to things. They simply lack confidence in manifesting. And again, I, I will say that I do feel that all of us have been in this situation, you know, at some point where we didn't have the confidence in actually manifesting what we wanted. They feel like they don't have any control. And that is actually completely false. It's actually the exact opposite. But the exact opposite brings with it an enormous amount of responsibility. And it's not the easiest thing to do. To really look around your life and think, oh yeah, I am responsible for this. Especially if life isn't going the way you want it to go. Like if you're sitting by yourself right now, feeling extremely lonely, not feeling loved or really upset, really hurt, and you are thinking, well, how dare you tell me that this is my manifestation, my responsibility, what did I do? And I know, yeah, it hurts, I've been there. I had to un F myself from situations. Realization. That is the first step. I had a customer who had a booking and she cancelled the same day, which means that she still had to pay for the cancellation because she cancelled so late, two hours before that she had to show up. And she got pissed at me because that she had to pay for something that she did need to take responsibility for. And I was very calm about it. Like, well, you could have cancelled yesterday, the night before. And you would not be here mad about your own choice. And the great thing here is that she could see it from my point of view. And after some months, I actually, you know, got a new booking from her. And when she came, she explained to me that the reason why she had to cancel was because that she had a moment that evening feeling alone. So she spent too much money on online shopping. So she realized that she got into this bad circle of this, oh, if I'm sad, spending money on things will make me happy material things will make me happy. The universe heard that and was like, oh, so money makes you sad? I am going to give you more of that. Well, it did and it got her even more into trouble. So she learned from that. The thing is, first of all, you need to be willing to dissect your life and your beliefs and be willing to take responsibility. And believe me, I know how hard it is because I had to do the same thing. You need to get to a place where you really understand it. Because until that day where you don't see yourself as the victim, you will never be able to manifest or create your own reality. And that is what you want to do, right? And I know that 
all of this might not be the most interesting part of how do I manifest. We will get into that now, but you have to understand the lines before that you can actually cut and make a dress, right? So let's get into how manifestation works. Manifestation and vibration are very clearly and closely related. If you strike a tuning fork that has an energetic vibration of a specific note, you can then tune your instrument to match that vibration. Now imagine yourself as the instrument and what you want to attract as the tuning fork. First of all, you need to learn what the vibration or frequency is of the thing you want to attract. It could be a specific person, event, circumstance or item, whatever the case. If I am vibrating at a frequency of love, of joy, of expansion, of confidence and calmness arises from that confidence. The vibration that I am on is going to sync up with everything else swirling around in this quantum universe of endless possibilities. Also has a vibration of fun, engagement, love, success and abundance. Why you might ask? Think of your brain as a TV set and you have got the remote. What you have done is, if you keep changing the channel, you will see a completely different show, a completely different picture, a completely different sound, words. Now, that doesn't mean that the other channel isn't there. It doesn't mean that it will always be there. It just means that you have changed channels. So your reality now consists of all that, all the channels, or you have watched, seen, learned, and it will be attracted to you based on the vibration that you are at right now. So how do you change your vibration? So that you can go from being a reactor to first of all, a responder to second of all, someone who is truly above the fray of lives, little ups and downs. How do you raise your vibration to a place where you are at all times content, blissful and happy about what's going on? Well, as ridiculous as this is going to sound, it's pretty simple. You have a tool within your possession that lets you know every single time you have fallen into the wrong frequency. So there is a right frequency and there is a wrong frequency. The right frequency is Anytime you feel good about what it is that you're doing, about what you are thinking, about how you are as a being, about how you're addressing, presenting yourself to people, about how you look, talk and walk. And the wrong frequency is when you are sitting somewhere and thinking about all the things that you don't have, all the things that you really want, all the things that you should have had, all the things that were owned to you, all the people that you miss and that you wish were there. And it is the wrong frequency because the universe does not understand negatives and it doesn't attract negatives. So what you say in your head, mind and soul and feel is, God, I don't want that guy to call me anymore. Guess what? He is for sure going to call you because the universe doesn't hear I do not want him to call me anymore. It hears everything but the nut. It hears I do want him to call me again. Like you saying, I don't want to be sad anymore. The universe is like, oh, she is sad and it will give you more of that. Because again, that's what you say or feel. I have always thought that the concept of the universe not hearing the negative was strange. But it's not about the negative or the inverse. It's about what you're focusing on. If you say in your mind, I don't have enough money, or you have a tendency to do the positive affirmations, not realizing that they are manifesting the negative. So... If you over and over say, I would really like some money, I would really like some money. What you are saying to the universe is, I don't have any money, I don't have any money. And the universe is like, oh, you don't have any money? So let me explain something else to help you understand. The one word that will 
bury you. The one single worst word that will trick your mind is the word don't. The problem with this word is that your subconscious mind doesn't understand the word don't. And let me illustrate that to you. Don't think of a piping hot pizza. Don't picture it coming out of the oven with steam rising. Don't think about the bubbling cheese. Don't think about the pepperoni. Don't think of the amazing smell. Just talking about this made me picture it so clear. You thought of a pizza, right? That's how your mind works. The universe's job is to give you more of whatever you are feeling. So the universe is going to be like, oh, you don't have any money. Well, here's some more poverty. Here's some more debt, some more bills. Here's some more of not having money. The key to success is to focus on the positive, not the possible negative. And it's simply how our mind is wired because eliminate the one four letter word and you will start to achieve more of what it is that you actually want in life. And that means eliminate the don't word or the not having. So whatever you put out is what the universe is like, oh, that's what she wants. That's what he wants. So if you're going around saying, I am alone, I will always be alone. I will never find love. The universe is going to be like, oh, you want to be alone. Well, here you go. That's what you are asking about. That's what they are feeling and saying. So I would just give them that because that is what she or he wants, right? So the universe is really working in a very simple way. The universe is working with what is already going on and it's going to mirror whatever you are already thinking and feeling. I am going to let this be part one because I do feel it's already a lot. But I hope that you guys have like a better picture of the law of attraction. Believe me, I'm not done because there's so much more to this. <laughs> also to how it is that you crack the code. But again, this is going to be part one. I am soon going to uh, record part two. But now you have the basics. Now you just have to learn to realize, you know, take responsibility, learn how to say the words, learn how to eliminate the don't, because again, it's a bad, bad, bad word if you wanna manifest. But let me know if you guys like this, if you guys can use this, let me know your thoughts about all of this, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.